Hi folks, my name is Dan Branton, and I'm one of the solutions architects here at Uptime Software. This is the first video and will be a series of technical tips on working with Uptime and applying best practices to IT modern in general. The topic of today's video is an introduction to the idea of application or business service monitoring. Usually when I talk with IT folks about monitoring applications or services, they want to know things like, are all my VMs up and running? Are my web servers alive and serving up pages? Are my databases accepting connections? Are my load balancers doing their thing? They're thinking about all those moving pieces that need to be working together behind the scenes in order for a website or client-facing application to be behaving properly. But when I talk with folks outside of IT, they don't care about any of those technical details. They just want to know if the website's up or not. Uptime's SLAs, or service level agreements, are a way to give business users or IT executives at a high-level dashboard view of the availability and performance of their applications in a way that makes sense to them, but at the same time providing us IT guys with the insight and metrics we need to understand how well we're delivering these services and where we need to improve to deliver them better. Today we're going to take a look at the first step of building an SLA and choose an application or business service in our environment to start monitoring. Don't worry too much about exactly how you need to monitor that application, but instead approach it by thinking about your application from a typical user's perspective and consider the things that matter to them when they're using the application. Identifying these components will help you to relate your application's performance to the requirements of your users. For my example today, I'm going to create an SLA for the website idea I've been talking about. So let's go to the app, My Infrastructure tab here in Uptime, and click on Add Service Level Agreement in the upper left corner, and take a look at some of the fields we need to start providing here. The first of which is the name of our Service Level Agreement. So remember, we're looking at this from the perspective of our users, so let's name it something that makes sense to them. In my case, I'm just going to call it the website but maybe something like email, SharePoint, or the online store would work in your scenario. Next is the description of the service level agreement, which is a chance to provide a little bit of detail or context about what we're monitoring and how we're gauging the application's performance. In my case, the only thing that matters about my website is if it's up or not, so that's what I'm going to put. Next comes the parent group or element folder, where I'm going to create my SLA with enough time. In my case, I've already got an element group created called SLAs that I've been using to share these with business users so that they've got a limited view with enough time. But you can, for now, you can just use my infrastructure group and we'll worry about user roles and privileges later. Next, we need to set the monitoring period, which allows us to define the period of time where application is supposed to be available with the time for which our SLA is measured against it. The default choice here is all the time or 24 by 7, but there's lots of flexibility here. Since my website's an internal only thing and it only needs to be available during the normal workday, I'm just going to set my time frame to 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Next comes the target percentage, which is the percentage of the monitoring period that our application is supposed to be available for its users. I'm just going to go with the default 99% here. Next, we need to choose our compliance period, which can either be weekly or monthly. In most cases, I recommend starting off with the weekly option as it provides a nice short interval to measure the application's availability and see responses and make adjustments. Remember the objective here is not just to demonstrate that you're meeting your SLA's targets, but also to have an effective means to measure availability, understand which elements or services are impacting your application's availability, and evaluate the impact of changes to your environment to help maximize the availability for your users. The final setting here is we need to consider how our SLA treats scheduled maintenance. In the case of my internal only website, it only needs to be up during the actual day, so I've got lots of time for a work window after hours. So I don't need to account for scheduled maintenance, and I'll treat that as downtime. So now that I've filled out all these initial fields, I'm going to click Save here and create my first SLA and take a look at what I've got. The first thing I'll see here is the combination of the target percentage, the monitoring period, and the compliance period type show me how much downtime I have available to me over a weekly time frame in order to hit 99% of that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. window. And there's nothing yet to actually use up any of this downtime, and that's going to come in a later video when we start creating service-level objectives or SLOs 